as you will have seen in the video, I'm leading the Citizen Sense project, which is based at Goldsmiths, University of London. And what we're looking at is the use of low-cost sensor technologies by citizens to better understand their environments. So we've done this work already in the area of pollution sensing, and now we're looking at urban sensing in smart cities. So smart cities are often featured like this, um, a kind of overarching diagram of the ways in which sensors, uh, the Internet of Things, will help to improve urban functions. And here you see a, a map from Labellium, which is a Spanish tech company. So everything from smart energy to smart uh, grids for traffic construction and congestion to noise maps and more. One area of particular interest for us is air pollution sensing, which is what we've looked at um, in more detail. And this is what you find in these uh, visions, is that citizens are an important part of how smart cities are meant to function. But what do those practices actually look like? So that's what we're looking at in much more detail and has been mentioned, and this is quite working, has been mentioned earlier um, in the innovation panel, is that open innovation and co-creation are really an important part of looking at how technologies are used. So that's what we're looking at here um, in this particular project, is how to make technologies, how to put them out into spaces where citizens are using them, and to see what happens, not as an end user problem, but as a kind of process along the way. So as part of that, we've done some sensor testing, and we've looked at a lot of off-the-shelf technology, not just technology that we can build ourselves. So here you'll see a very popular air pollution sensing technology called the Air Quality Egg. And this technology, um, which is meant to be just a plug-and-play technology, we found is actually quite difficult to work with as a kind of if you didn't necessarily have advanced technological knowledge. And the data also that the, um, t that the egg put out wasn't necessarily comparable to what you would see in an air quality monitoring network. So this really raised questions. How could regulators take seriously the data that citizens are collecting? What does this data look like um, and how to make sense of it if you're actually trying to challenge the kinds of readings that official um, monitoring stations might be producing and also how you might be able to produce new data sets that could provide different pictures about uh, what's going on in urban air pollution. So these are um, technologies we then took out into the field to actually test in more detail in relation to the official monitoring stations to try out a range of technologies, to map those, and to create maps to look at pollution hotspots and to see in more detail not just re what sort of readings you're getting from a fixed pollution station, but what sorts of pollution uh, readings you might be getting as you move through the city. And this is another important point, is that you might understand pollution differently if you look at your individual exposure as opposed to what a fixed station is telling you. So um, we've done, as I mentioned, a kind of first wave of this testing. Um, here's a, a citizen sensing kit that we developed for pollution sensing to look particularly um, at how citizens might monitor pollution in relation to industry, specifically hydraulic fracturing. And we created this kit and deployed it to over 30 citizens to use over a space of seven months. What we found was really interesting um, is in the process of generating data, um, it's a bit of an advancement problem. That uh, the data that citizens uh, generated, which um, was quite interesting because they had a spatially dense network of collecting data, is that regulators didn't necessarily take seriously um, the data that citizens were gathering. So this was a conversation that citizens began to have with their policymakers. They began to notice patterns in relation to industry events, for instance, um, and then began to ask how uh, regulators might do something in relation to these events. And it was a conversation about how robust um, and accurate the citizen data was, which is quite um, an interesting conversation, I think, as sensors develop and everyone's using them, including in wearables. So this is something we then took into thinking about how to rethinkify the smart city. If smart cities are spaces in which there is a kind of pro um, proliferation of sensors and citizens are meant to also be sensing, then what role is there for citizens in thinking about how to rethinkify, rethink and rework the smart city so it's not just a top-down tech initiative, but it's actually something that citizens can contribute to in a variety of ways. 
So we had a workshop recently uh, in Berlin where we asked a number of people, if you could rethinkify the smart city and the kinds of urban sensing that went on there, what sorts of scenarios might you develop? And here you can see of everything from smart grids and people rethinking smart grids such that homes might become power plants in a decentralized uh, power network, um, to taking data walks, collecting data, air quality monitoring, of course, and generating new kinds of citizen engagement. But here, as I've mentioned, a kind of critical question is how can that data that citizens gather be taken seriously in regulatory spaces and beyond? So that's something that we're now beginning to test in a second wave of urban sensing, which is in South London, where we're looking at air quality, um, again, in an urban environment. So thanks very much uh, to the ERC, of course, and if you're interested to follow the project, we're at citizensense.net. Thanks. <laughs>